Welcome to In The Kitchen. Using an ultrasonic cleaner to remove rust from various metal parts taken from my workshop. This is a Bernard multi-size collet set and I bought it about 26 years ago and it was very expensive. The other night I was looking on eBay and there are still quite a few of these for sale and they still fetch quite a lot of money, I was quite surprised. When I first bought this set and opened the box, the collets were nicely positioned in a piece of foam, which I took out of the box and put on a shelf behind the lathe. I put the collets back in the holes in the piece of foam and it made it very easy to get at them whilst I was working on the lathe. But unfortunately, over the years, the foam degraded and became sticky and really nasty. And over this long period, the collets did suffer from corrosion. I threw the foam away and put the collets in this box with a piece of cloth underneath. But as you can see, metal parts on pieces of cloth is not a good idea, because the cloth retains moisture and the moisture causes rust. The collets have only been in this box with the cloths for 18 months. And as you can see, there is evidence of rust. But never mind, I have an ultrasonic cleaner and a bottle of this stuff. This is an oxidation removal ultrasonic solution because it says so on the bottle. Here's a close-up of the label with the web address so you can go online and buy some. A lot of viewers have recommended some stuff called Evaporust, so I'm going to try some of that as well. This stuff is from allendale-ultrasonics.co.uk I've already tried this stuff once in this ultrasonic cleaner and the results on a thoroughly red rusty chuck from my Smart and Brown lathe were quite amazing. I don't find that this stuff is much good for degreasing, so I've added some washing up liquid to the mix as well, and a little bit more of the solution. This appears to work okay, or it did on the last thing I cleaned. The first item into the basket is this rusty, four-jaw independent chuck from my Myford lathe. I set the timer on the front of the ultrasonic cleaner for half an hour, put the chuck in the basket, and the basket into the cleaner. And here it is with 15 minutes to go. Something's happening because the water's changed colour. The sound this thing makes puts your teeth on edge a little bit, but I can live with that, just look at the result. The four-jaw chuck looks much better than it did originally. Here's a before and after, and there is a considerable difference. This is just how the chuck came out of the ultrasonic cleaner. I've done nothing at it, this is what it looked like. You may be thinking, well, the chuck's been in water, why is it not rusting internally? You have to remember, the water is quite hot, and when you take the parts out of the ultrasonic cleaner, they are also very hot, and any water evaporates fully and very quickly. The next items into the ultrasonic cleaner are these old micrometers. They were quite rusty. I'm giving them a bit of a start, though, because they were also very oily. The vernier dials on every one of these micrometers were quite stiff. Into the cleaner they go, and I think this time I set it to 20 minutes. The final items to go into the cleaner were all of the collets. Here on the kitchen table are all the parts that are put into the cleaner. And look how clean they are. I left the collets in the cleaner for half an hour, and they really are clean. And more importantly, rust free. So this liquid is pretty good in combination with the ultrasonic cleaner. I think I will probably make a video though showing the effect of other rust removers. I was amazed at the transformation of this Barco spanner. It's the one that I use with my large traction engine. And I left it along with some other spanners in a plastic tub behind the seat. But unfortunately the tarpaulin that covers the traction engine to catch the condensation off the roof funneled all the water into the little plastic box where the spanners were. So this particular spanner was very rusty indeed. But after introducing the spanner to this ultrasonic cleaner, it's fine. After I'd finished cleaning all the parts, I thought it might be a good idea to clean the cleaner, as it was contaminated with rust spots and bits of metal generally. I cleaned it manually and then rinsed it through with some hot water. Here are some of the bits of metal that came out of the tank. The water's quite hot, so it's doing two things. It's cleaning out the tank and it's pre-warming it because I still need to try cleaning these pieces. I'm not filling the tank quite as full as I did previously. There's more than enough water here. I'm pouring some more of the ultrasonic cleaning solution in. And for these parts, by way of an experiment, I'm only going to set the timer for 15 minutes. By the way, before I forget and before everybody writes in to tell me, I am aware of the trick of putting the parts in the solution in a sealed bag, like a plastic bag. 
but I really can't be bothered doing that. I'll just buy some more solution. I won't be using this machine a lot anyway. If you watch this clip carefully, you'll see the colour change. Here it is. The liquid seems to change colour as the rust just goes into the solution. I thought I would clean my skull as well. This has been sat in my recording studio for quite a lot of years to say the least. It was very dirty and dusty and also covered in nicotine because in the studio people, including myself, used to smoke at one time. The skull came out really well. And while this skull cleaning was going on I thought I would take the opportunity to line the box where the collets live. I found a really strong supermarket carrier bag so I cut this up and this is going to be okay I think because it's not absorbent and this plastic will help prevent the cardboard from becoming soggy when I spray the collets with WD-40. So how are the parts doing? Well I removed the skull and that's nice and clean and the parts are not too good really, I'm not too thrilled with this. Although when I look closely the chuck is fine, it's really cleaned up the chuck very well indeed. But the other parts, like the really ancient calipers, and particularly a couple of pieces of steel bar, are not so good. So while I'm editing this video, I've put them all back in the basket and the basket back into the tank for a further 20 minutes. When it's finished, I'll have a look at them and see if there's any improvement. That's it for this episode. Please stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.